everyone welcome back to RTS I hope all of you are doing well in today's video I wanted to share something a little different because I'm going to share a layout process video that we recently did over patreon during our red white and blue series and of course it's a Disney page absolutely I'll talk about that in just a minute and the other thing is I wanted to answer a question that I get every single week <laughs> every single week. And what do you think that question is? What is Patreon? So the short answer is, is that Patreon is the same thing as YouTube. The exact same thing. It's a website. It's a place you go to, to watch videos that other people create. That's all it is. The difference is a Patreon, you pay to play. You pay to watch a certain person create certain videos. Over at YouTube, you can watch anybody. Now, some people would say, well, why would I go to Patreon when I can watch YouTube for free? Well, it's almost one of those things that one is apples, one is oranges, but it's all still fruit, if that makes sense. Over at Patreon, you're watching a certain person, you're paying a certain fee, and at YouTube, it's not always going to be free, because if you want to watch videos without ads, you now have to pay for that. So again, it's, it's the same, but it's not the same. Everybody offers something different because everybody wants something different. So again, it's all about having fun in whatever form or fashion. There's not one that's better than the other. There's not one that's worse than the other. It's whatever you like. So again, my link is below. If you wanna come over and hang out with us, you are more than welcome. It's just a dollar a month. So what do we do over at Patreon? The same thing you see on YouTube. <laughs> it's scrapbooking, it's organizing, it's talking about this product, new product, old product, just a little bit of everything. My videos tend to be a little bit longer, which is probably why they're not as well suited for YouTube because YouTube likes for you to stay under that 15 minutes. You know, it's kind of like fly by. Fly by. <laughs> it's like Waffle House. Come in and leave really early. That's what it is. <laughs> Patreon, you can hang out a little bit longer. So what we've been doing is recently we've been doing the Warehouse Box Buzz series where we get a warehouse box and we play with those contents and we talk about the different type of contents in a warehouse box. And there'll probably be more than one segment in that series coming up. We have also been playing with our collections this year and we have been tracking them. So if you would like this queen bee, wannabe queen bee <laughs> tracker, I will have the uh, blog listed below where this lady lovingly created this and you can print it out and you can keep track of anything in your life. I'm just keeping a track of the collections. And so far we have played with what over 30 some <laughs> collections uh, over at Patreon. It's amazing how much you can get done, especially when you see your tracking results. And we also have been doing camera crop. Every other Friday night we get together, we hang out, it's very informal. We do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then also we have been playing with Allison Davis and her six by six class. What else do we got going on? Organizing videos. <laughs> A little bit of everything so you're more than welcome come over and hang out with us so what I want to do now is show a layout process video I'm just gonna add it to this video and which we built this layout now the reason why this layout came about is because again we've been playing I had another series where we did red white and blue and we talked about in length different layouts you can do playing with the red, white, and blue. It does not have to be about Americana and fireworks on barbecue. There's a lot of things in your life that you can scrapbook with this color scheme of red, white, and blue, and Disney is one of them, and so we created this page. Now, the reason why I did this page, of course, I love Disney, but also to answer a question I got from some of the gals over there, and they are from overseas, and they wanted to know how can you do pretty layouts when you don't have a lot of embellishments. So that's what this layout was about, and you'll see it in the video. We did a faux chipboard title, which I showed in the video, how we created that. We got some fringe on here, we got some hidden minis on here, and just building a simple page but a pretty page. So I will add that clip. Again, uh, I will have some links listed below. Just hit that show more button. Come over, hang out with us and definitely take time to enjoy this hobby. So here's the video.
So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to be playing with a page map sketch and it's number seven. And I will have the list below because this is the new August 2021 sketches and these are free. So grab them, print them and use them because oh, they are my favorite sketches. They really are. Now, another thing I wanted to say is if you look at this sketch, number seven, guess what? There is not anything listed. There's no title. There is no title listed in this one and there's no title listed in this sketch. However, when it comes to creating a layout, you do not have to have a title on your layout. You really don't. You don't even have to have a photo on your layout, which is what I do all the time in story-based layouts. You don't even have to have the date, even though I do think the date is the most important thing on your layout. Even before a photo, the date is important because everyone always asks, when was that? When was that? Now, the other thing I wanted to say is, why would you want to do a title? Well, if you think of your albums as a storybook, because that's really what our albums are. Each album is a storybook and those layouts within your album is the chapters of your storybook. And of course, each chapter of a book usually has a title. So that's why I like to have titles on my pages, but honestly, you don't have to. And even in Becky's sketch, she don't even have a title, but look at what she has. She just has a photo on top of a big piece of paper and a visual triangle. It's a very easy page. I love this. Love this. I love every one of these sketches. I really do. So sometimes when I'll print out sketches, what I'll do is especially for page maps, I put one in my binder automatically and then I play with one. I just keep it out and play with it. So what are we going to do first? Oh my goodness. <laughs> we are going to be playing with three photos. We are going to answer the question because here in the United States, we have scrapbook embellishments of plenty. But there's gals that's overseas that don't have a lot of embellishments. So I got the question, how can you create visual triangles and pretty pages without a ton of embellishments? We're going to talk about that because we're going to use paper for our embellishments. And of course, you know, we're going to get that visual triangle in. And uh, what else? Just a little bit of everything. But before we do that, let's go ahead and build my title because we were talking about that. So I'm going to be playing with a new die that I got. I'm pretty sure it's brand new. Uh, as far as on the market. I've never seen it before, but that doesn't mean it's new. And so I'm going to be playing with this uh, My Favorite Things. It is a stitched alphabet. And when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I need this. Because, uh, you know, thickers are getting almost up to 6 and $7 a pack. That is out of my price range. So, uh, of course, I tell myself, I buy a die, I won't buy any thickers, but you know, that's not always the case. So what I'm going to do is build a simple title, and of course, what's it going to be? Mini, but I'm going to use these stitched alphas. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a faux chipboard alpha, and I wanted to show this. I've talked about this before, but there are some new gals here. So this is what I'm going to build. M I. C K E Y. No, we're not doing Mickey. We're doing Mini today. <laughs> M I N N I E. And what you can tell is, is if I if I do this, it's not just a uh, an alpha. It's now chipboard because I built it myself. And I wanted to show you quickly how I do that and how you can do that with any die you have. Now mine seem a little cattywampus probably because I was with Hobby doing this and watching a ball game and oh my goodness all I'm going to say is Yankees and Aaron Boone and that's all I'm going to say because he, he is not a happy camper. He honestly came up the other night and said I think I'm just going to give up baseball. He said I'm honestly going to give up baseball. Another story for another day. So let's build this. So uh, I have some here. So I have um, my letters. And so say if I was working on the M, of course, if I turn this upside down, you know, you can always use a W for an M if you need that on your pages. Okay. So what we're going to do is build our own chipboard, our faux chipboard. And I will tell you, this one looks a little cattywampus, but it is what it is. And so all you need is to die cut your whatever. It doesn't even have to be an alpha. It can be a shape, but be a basic shape. And then what you're going to do is die cut it or punch it four or five times, depending on how thick your cardstock is. Now, this really won't work with paper. It has to be cardstock. If you want to do it with thin paper, you're going to have to have more than four or five layers. So I usually do four. And then what you do... Oh, might as well take uh, my ring off because we're going to get into some serious scrapbooking. Is that we are going to put glue on the top of three of those. 
and then we're just going to stack them like firewood. That's all we're going to do. So I do this all at one time. So I uh, put all the adhesive down and then I stack them all at one time. And I'm using Tombow Mono Liquid Aqua Glue in this blue because when that dries, it dries hard. It really does. Now, you see how this looks a little cattywampus? This is exactly why when you go to stack them, you don't want anything intricate because it's going to be hard to line it up. And so you line it up and then you squeeze. And all you're doing is gluing those layers together. Now that looked like it's perfect. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> yeah. But my end looks a little cattywampus there. So this is a good way to do your own chipboard letters. Use your own punches, use your own dies, punch out more than one. I punched out four. That's my preferred, but you can go five, you can go six. It depends on how thick you want them or how thin. Maybe if this is even a little too thick, maybe go three layers. It's everybody's going to be a little different. And then once these dry, then sometimes you have to bend them into shape a little bit because it dries rock solid. And that is how you make your own faux chipboard. So that's what I did. I took that My Favorite Things Stitch Dies. I did four M's, four I's twice, four N's twice, and then four E's. And I stacked them and glued them just like I showed you. And I did did this uh, earlier. And then uh, when I would glue these, I would just use my tacky glue. And that's all it is, your own faux chipboard. And this is really pretty because they're stitched. Really, really. So now I have a set of stitched wood grain or stitched alphas and a set of wood grain alphas. If that's all I ever buy again, <laughs> I'm happy. I definitely like these stitched. And then the wood grain alphas. I'll have those listed below too. Those were by Memory Box, I think. Oh, yes. I, I definitely can just say I love those two die sets. So that's what we're going to do is we are going to use the title mini for our page. So let me slide that over. Now what we're going to do then, of course, you know, we're playing with a red, white, and blue kit. So we are going to be playing with red, white, and blue paper. I kid you not. And I'm going to be playing from the uh, Cartabella line, God Bless America. So I'm going to be playing with this red dot and this beautiful blue floral paper. And I'm going to get three embellishments from this. What? Yes, I'm going to get three different types of embellishments from the paper. And then I have an old school piece of Teresa Collins from 2014 because it says, Hello, my name is. And that's why I used the title mini. Isn't that perfect? Love that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But you can see uh, for the sketch, it is not going to be very complicated. It's just photos and a visual triangle. Easy peasy. But we're going to make it pretty because we are going to do some levels of layers and we talked about that in organizing recently levels of organizing four or five different levels of organizing i'll have that video listed below so uh what we're going to do is mini there we go and i'm going to put her on a mat so my piece of paper here and i probably should have measured that i would say this is four by mm, i say four by ten probably yeah four by ten and i'm going to put that there and then there's my photo so that right there is Becky's sketch. I kid you not. That is her sketch. If you go to the bare bones, you have a photo on top of a strip of paper or a band of paper, a block of paper. That's all that is. That is her page design. The rest is a visual triangle. So look at that bare bones. Four by ten. And there's my four by six photo. So I already know that I'm going to put a piece of craft behind this. So it's four and a fourth by six and a fourth. I'll probably center that because I am going to get three more photos. And all I did was take my four by six photos and cut them, cut them down. I cut off a lot of background. And I'd say these are probably uh, three by four and a half, something like that. Or three by four, something like that. So I'm going to put mini up here and I'm going to put mini down here somewhere. So that is going to be my arrangements. And of course, you know, we're going to put the title. Might have to move this down a little bit. M I and an IE. And that's my title, Mini. And there's my photos of Mini. How fun is this? And you can see, uh, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but in real life, you can really see that stitching. It looks great. And again, when that Tombow Mono Liquid Aqua Glue dries, it dries hard. And sometimes you do have to bend these a little bit so that they will lay flat on your page. And I do usually let that stuff dry overnight, or at least for a few hours. Mini, 
Why am I keep messing with this? I don't know. My hands are shaky, so shaky today. <laughs> There's no way that's going to be straight. So that is the bare bones of the page. And so then what I'm going to do is play with another die. And I'm going to be playing and uh, getting some fringe on here. So I have this die here. And this is from Sizzix. And it's a long border die. And I wish they were still available. I don't have a lot of these, but the ones I have, I really like. It's called Stitched, no, Scallop fringe fringe scallop so if you're looking for a great big scallop this would be it because you don't have to use the fringe even though it'll cut it you could still use this as a big scallop die see what i'm saying just hide the fringe you really really can but i'm going to use the fringe to my benefit that sound like friends with benefits. Anyways, yeah, you could use that big scallop. So if you can't find a scallop punch, maybe look for a scallop die. You can usually find these things on Etsy or eBay, or every so often Sizzix has a great big sale, so you can find them. So this just a fringed, so you, you see that. See what I'm saying? It's a fringe. So I'm going to put those two layers, and so this was one piece and as you can see, it's got eight big scallops. And I just cut it in half because I'm going to use the fringe down at the bottom for Miss Miss Minnie. And, of course, look at her little dress. She's got little scallops underneath her dress. Oh, my goodness. Her little pantaloons. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what did I do with that stitched alpha? I don't want to lose that. And then also, you see how these stitched alphas are all connected? I will continuously... For the rest of my life keep those attached it's easier for me to do all this alpha at one time than to uh, cut these apart and have to place them so i just these are here i love when they're connected like that because i will use that as one big die even when i use the word mini i used it in its entirety i did that so on uh, how do you not waste paper just put a little piece of paper under the letters you do want but that's why i like keeping them all together okay tangent tangent sorry sorry so uh we're gonna put uh, and you can see I have a lot of little um, fibers there because of that fringe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the fringe down at the bottom just like this. So I'm going to be hiding the scallops. But if you want the scallops, you hide the fringe. So that is a two-for-one really great long border die. And if anybody else sees these, let me know. I'm always looking for these long border dies. I love them, love them, love them. I never bought them when they came out, but I'm enjoying them now. So I'm just going to do two layers of the fringe. So basically, I will be hiding the scallops. And then once I adhere this down, I'm going to flip that up for the fringe. And you'll see that in close-ups. But I will tell you, look at all that. Look at all them fibers from the fringe. You can expect that. So there. <laughs> My little fringe looks like her little pantaloons. That is too cute. Now the other thing I'm going to do is, uh, what do we want to do now? Well, we have the title. Let's do a visual triangle. And then let's play with punches. So let's talk about using paper to your benefit. And let's talk about breaking out our punches. So as I said earlier, I'm going to be using this floral paper for three embellishments, meaning I'm going to fussy cut some of the flowers. I'm going to use the blue for some extra decoration. And then I'm going to use this red gingham for some decoration. So honestly, this piece of paper that I'm in love with, <laughs> it's Cartabella. Oh, I just love you. And I love the color of these flowers. These are, this can be pattern paper. This can be embellishments. The blue can be embellishments, the blue background. Because, you know, when you fussy cut, what are you going to do with that blue? And then, of course, you're going to have the flip side where you have that as well. So we are going to, uh, here is what I have fussy cut. And I'll show you some more. And this is what I mean. Here is the rest of the flowers that I had fussy cut because I just took a section of it. I just took six inches and I just fussy cut six inches worth and then I kept the scraps and I just kept them to the side because the scraps is where I'm going to get my other embellishments. So the three here I have on the left is the ones I decided on. And what can you see in those three flowers right off the bat? Is that they are in three different sizes, which is perfect when you're talking a visual triangle. So another thing is we're gonna break out these circle punches and let me put them here. And then tell me what you see in these punches. They're all circle punches. 
and they're three different sizes. So that's how you can build a visual triangle easily and quickly as just go different sizes. And I always say with your circle punches, you're not going to find any more shape that's easier and more versatile than the circle punch. And so we're going to do three different sizes. So here we go. We have three different sizes and I use that Teresa Collins, hello, my name is. And so we're going to start building clusters with this. So I'm going to put one down here. I'm going to put my medium one here. And I'm going to put my big one or my small one here. So right there is the, going to be my visual uh, triangles. And I started with three different sizes. Just say small, medium, large of circles. And then I'm going to start with uh, three different size flowers. So I'm going to put one here, one here. And then I'm going to take this big one. And I may have to slide all of this down a little bit. Depends on how this goes or slide this up a little bit. Because I am going to put a little bit of decoration in my photos uh, of my flowers. So say if I'm going to put this uh, like right there. And I am going to have a little bit of this flower overlapping mini and overlapping this flower right here. Just so it's connecting. So it doesn't look like I just have paper sneeze or die cut sneeze or puncher sneeze. Punch sneeze. Okay, so that's how we do that. So then, of course, if you look at my visual triangle, I have everything the same. I have flowers. They're just in different sizes. I have that circle punch. Hello, my name is, but in different sizes. Now look at the colors. I have the colors of everything the same, except I don't have this periwinkle purple. And guess what? I really don't have any of that purple maybe in my photos, so that's okay. You can always add or take away a photo. Why is this sticking up? is that uh, what you can do is just go ahead and pretend that there was a piece of that purple. So what I did, honestly, I cut a little scrap. Look at that. That's just a little pop of that purple and I'm gonna stick it underneath here and you would think that was part of the die cut. Mm, that's a sneaky little way to do that, is it not? So now what are we gonna do? Now we are going to take the remainder of that blue and that red that I had showed you so, so too far, so far, all I have is two pieces of paper. So I'm going to use the blue now and I'm going to take a punch and we're going to do some leaves and then I'm going to take another punch and with the opposite of that paper, we're going to build some more leaves. That is one way to really stretch your paper. Really, really, really. So the flowers all came from Cartabella, the blue leaves from Cartabella, and that is Cartabella. So when you see this floral pattern paper, don't think to yourself, well, how am I going to use that? Well, first of all, just cut it in half and use it as half. And so that breaks out how busy this image is. And then look at, this is an embellishment. This blue can be a coordinating embellishments and the flip side, coordinating embellishments. So what I'm going to do now is use... Let's see, this punch here, that's from Martha Stewart, and this one here, and this is from, who is this from? This is a fern. Oh, this is from McGill. McGill Fern. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to use some scrap of white, and we're going to build more leaves yet. Honestly, and that's just a scrap. And that is also a Martha Stewart punch. So, so far, we are up to... Six punches and two dies <laughs> so far. Yeah, that's using your tools, is it not? So what we're going to do is I'm going to add a pop of red up here. And then I'm going to do a pop of red here. So whatever I'm doing in one, I go ahead and automatically do in the other. And that's just how, um, you know, it helps you know what to put where. So we're going to do this. And... I love this playing part. I love this part. What I don't like is having to glue it all down. But uh, what I do and how do I glue? I just put someone on and let them talk to me as I'm putting all this stuff together. So um, I think this will probably go something like that. Okay, so I have these two leaves. So then now I'm going to take the blue and I'm going to put one blue one up here. And I'm even going to put it in the same position, which means I'm going to put it right by the red fern. So here I have this blue leaf. I'm going to put it by the red fern. So I stick that there. And so far, all we have is paper and punches. That's, it is. That's, that's all that is. But it looks like it's custom embellishments because we're using a gorgeous piece of paper. I mean, isn't this 
Oh, this is part of the SOS series, stretching your paper. It really is. So another blue leaf by a fern, another blue leaf by a fern. And I wish gluing was as fast as this, but it's not. That's how I did that. Now with a piece of white scrap that was laying on my desk, I grabbed another punch and I'm going to now beef this up a little, but I don't want to introduce another color. So what I'm going to do is use white. So it's going to be hidden a little bit, but you're also going to see it. Oh, that's sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. When you want to see something, or if you want to layer, but you don't really want to see your layer, yeah, go ahead and do it in your background color. So white and black, beautiful. So I'm going to do two down here. So I'm going to put one, I would say down here. And of course, you know, I'm going to have close-ups of everything. And this is also a Disney page. So guess what? See if you can find my hidden Mickey. I'm not going to show it on the video. See if you can find the hidden Mickey. So we'll just do all that. Look how pretty that is. I mean, just look at that. That is all paper. All paper. All paper. And it's all the same thing. It's just I have different sizes. So this would be my 25. This would be my 50. And this is my 75. And we uh, talk about that in building clusters. I'll have those videos listed below. So what else could we do? Well, let's talk about taking this up to the next notch. But what I could do first, because this would be where some people want to stop, and that's completely fine. But you know me, I always have to do more. Because uh, sometimes you just want to do more on a page. But if you want to be done with this, let's put journaling. I'm going to put journaling down here, or even on top of that. And then, of course, I would get the date. So I would just put the date, say if I wanted to put the date up here. That would be fun. You could do that. Or you could put it right here, mini. You could put it, but I think I'm going to put it down here. Because, you know, down here I'm getting a little bit uh, of a bigger cluster. And I like a bigger cluster where my journaling is because your eye is going to go to the biggest. And so I like to have my journaling near the biggest cluster. That doesn't always work that way, but sometimes I like that. So now let's talk about taking this up another level or another layer. So what I could do, and I'll probably leave my year there, is that let's now add another circle. So I could take the same size circle and just layer this. So now we're going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to take the same size circle, and guess what? I'm going to layer this. And you're not going to see the whole circle. You're just going to see another layer of that circle. And down here, oh, yeah, I'm going to beef this up again, and I'm going to do two of them. It's just another little element. So if you want to take your layout again to another level or layer, just add two of the same things, really, really. And now what I'm going to do is add some word stickers. So I'm going to put one up here that says, and so the venture begins, and that's going to go up here with Minnie. Probably we'll put it on there somewhere like that, or maybe underneath. And then, of course, over here, I'm going to put, you make my heart smile. I'll probably somehow put that there. Maybe not cover up the flower. Something like that. And of course, when you're playing... You know, the result is always different when you go to start adhering. It's just the way it is. And don't be afraid to let some of your elements, some of your layers, to touch and overlap your photos. Especially if you have some elements in your photos, it doesn't matter. I don't need all these geraniums. I don't need all those flowers because right here, I got many. That's all I need. And then down here, I'm going to do the same thing. And I like this one. These are all Tim Holtz stickers. And, of course, you see I used black. And it says, you are never too old to dream a new dream. And then uh, let's take this up to another layer. Let's do it again. So uh, I showed you the visual triangle. That was one layer. Uh, adding some word stickers, getting the date on there, adding an extra little circle takes it to another layer. So now let's do finishing touches that will take this to another layer. So what I'm going to do is another die, and this is the studio light. And the reason I'm playing with this is because it was already on my desk. I'm going to use those little X's or little hugs and kisses, as I like to call it. And I'm going to put this down here at the bottom. So sometimes it pays that if you haven't cleaned up from your previous page, because this is from a previous page, and I'm just going to put it down there. So another little finishing touch, and I will probably uh, tuck my journaling underneath that bottom layer. Mm, yeah. And then what else are we going to do? How about we put a finishing touch? Let's put some washi right on top of this red paper. So it looks like it is like... Like maybe a billboard hanging. I love using washi. 
and I love this black and white polka dot Ulta new washi. It was in stock for probably one day and out of stock the next. I did not get any out. I didn't get any ordered, but I have um, my notifications on. And so when it comes back in again, hopefully I will get some ordered. I love that. It is by Ulta new. I'll put the link below. That way you could... Uh, if you want to get it, just put in there, email me or text me when it comes in stock. Love that washi. And then, of course, what else? Finishing touch, mm, photo corners. So I'm going to use some craft photo corners, and I'm going to put craft on top of craft just like that. And I'm going to come down here if I have room. I don't know. I'm getting a little covered up down there. <laughs> I'm probably, I mean, I could put one up here. I could always put it there so you would see it. But I don't know if I like that. I want to put it down here. So I probably will put it down here. And if it gets covered up, so well be. Who gives a who gives a hoot? If it's covered up, it's covered up. But I will put it there. And then another finishing touch, of course, for a lot of people is enamel dots. And I'm not going to use enamel dots on this page. I'm going to use pearls. Why? Because they were on my desk for my last page. And I like the pearls because we are talking about mini. So what I will do is I will probably use the medium size, or maybe I could just, let's see if we get the big ones. I have trouble using the big ones. And I'm gonna put them in each one of these flower centers. I think I will, that way they will show up and they will get used. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the big ones. I'm just using tweezers because some of these flat backs, the adhesive comes off. And so, Let's put that there. Oh my goodness, everything's moving on me. But I'll have some completed close-ups. You'll get a better visual of what it really looks like. Oh, that is really just all over the map. But I love this part. I, I love this part of playing. I really do. It's the gluing and deciding where it's going to go. And then up here, I'm just going to do one. So in this small cluster, I'm going to use one pearl. In that medium one, is going to be two. And down here, guess what? I'm going to get four on here. I really am. I'm going to go ahead and do that if you want to just watch me. Sure. I'm going to do that. And how would I hear these layers? You know, my Scotch Quick Dry. For the bigger pieces, I use my ATG but all the and my photos. But all these other elements, Quick Dry all the way. But then my other third favorite adhesive was that Tombow Mono Liquid. Because... That um, is really good when you're doing faux chipboard because it dries clear and you still have some wiggle room. So I have another little one. Now, that makes a visual triangle there, but I'm not going to worry about that because overall, my pearls are going to make a visual triangle within the visual triangle of the big visual triangle. Absolutely. And that's how you do it when you want to create embellishments in a visual triangle and only use paper or punches, things like that, because right there, that's all that was, was paper, paper, paper. Now, don't forget to look for, oh, that's, that's what that Ulta New polka dot washi is. Love it. It's my favorite washi ever. Look for my hidden Mickey. And then if you want to put any of these on layers, you would grab your phone tape. Your foam tape, and you know, I think maybe for this one, I think I will put this on foam tape because see, look how it wants to already appear like it's on foam tape. And I think it's probably the layers of the fringe. So this one down here will definitely have to be on foam tape. You really can. And that is my page. I hope you enjoyed that. And that is also uh, this red, white, and blue series. I do want to give one more tip when you are wanting to punch the small remnants that you have when you're fussy cutting, see? See how that is so small? But yet you want to punch, you want to punch something. Well, how are you gonna, how are you gonna get that in there? It's too small. I'll say this one right here, this is a perfect example. How are you gonna get that in there? Because once you put it in there, you're going to lose that. And this was a Jennifer, mcguire hack i'm really sure yeah so just get some post-it notes and you know post-it notes has a sticky side so you're going to put a post-it note on the tip of your scrap and then you're going to feed it in your punch this way of course we always use our punches upside down and that post-it note will be your handle look at that easy peasy lemon squeezy so when you have that beautiful cartabella paper or that minte or that p13 and you want to use every scrap that's how you do it. Use a post-it note, and that will be your handle so you can get a hold 
of that scrap in your punch. I definitely wanted to show that because I had to use that when I did the blue leaves and when I did uh, the ferns. I had to do that little bit of a hack, so I wanted to show you that. So that's all I have for today. That's all I have for this red, white, and blue series. Definitely look for the hidden Mickey. Put it in the comment section if you can find it. And come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.